Hi, I'm Mari Takahashi, and I'm an executive producer and host on the YouTube channel Smosh Games. I started ballet when I was two and a half. I'm a second generation ballerina, so my mom was a dancer, and she was a professional ballerina and a teacher, and was part of our daily lives from as far back as I can remember. That was kind of my career path that I had always known to be, and the only thing I thought I would do for the rest of my life. When I told them, I'm not gonna dance anymore, and going into the lifestyle of a YouTuber, I thought that it was gonna be, you know, this long, drawn out, like, two year conversation of why I'm making the mistake of my life. And to my surprise, they were completely okay with it. And that was something I didn't expect. And I think I just didn't give them enough credit. I realized that in my adulthood, they set me up for a career path because at the end of the day, they just wanted me to have a career, to put food on the table, and just be safe and fine. And that's all what a parent really wants. Growing up, the Asian American role models that I saw on television and film were, you know, the, the Jackie Chans and the Lucy Lou's of the world. But for somebody like me, they always felt too big or just too unattainable for a random girl from San Francisco. And so it really wasn't until I found YouTube and Ryan Higa and the Michelle Fons of the world really touched me in a way where it was like, gosh, I'm seeing Asian Americans in a completely new light. Ryan Higa is this starring Asian American man who's funny and, uh, you know, funny in his own light and he has perfect control over it. And Michelle Phan made me feel beautiful in my own skin for the first time in ever. So growing up, gaming was just part of our culture. I think the evolution of it is that now it is hugely ingrained in our culture, and it's now really cool to be a part of gaming. Growing up where I grew up, specifically in the San Francisco Bay Area and being Japanese American, there were plenty of times where I was reminded that I was not cool. You know, bringing sushi to school, not cool. Just, just like speaking a different language with my parents, not cool. All of these reminders were <laughs> things that I really took to heart as like, man, I'm different and, and that is marked as not cool. Fast forward to the industry that, that I get to be in now and it's everything that has been built up, uh, you know, from the Nintendos of the world to the Sony Playstations. I mean, these are cultures, these are um, languages and, and technologies from my people. And I get to be proud of that. It's, it's this cultural sort of mixing that, that, you know, we should just be grateful for. I think there's a, a lot of walls being melted down and I think there's, there's a lot less pressure on how we need to present ourselves. I think we should be proud of who we are because we're, you know, there, there's a lot of history and culture wrapped around in it. As a woman and as an Asian American woman in this industry, there's not a lot of us. And instead of seeing that as, gosh, things are gonna be difficult, gosh, things are gonna be stacked against me because of this, it's, it's been my narrative and it's been important for me to carve out that narrative of, in spite of all those things, I've been able to get to where I am in my career. I see it and I hope that, you know, other people who see themselves in the, in the same or similar sort of situation of, man, I am the minority in this situation as a way to create a niche for yourself, to capitalize on that, to, you know, carve yourself into an industry that perhaps you're not represented enough in and stand up tall and be proud of that.